Hi everybody, Liz and Annie back finally with some more videos for you. This time we're focusing on helping everyone in the UCR community transition from iLearn or Blackboard over to Canvas, which is going to be something we're all needing to do in the next academic year. So we're starting today with a video where Annie's going to walk us through how you share videos that you have in Yuja with your course in Canvas. Uh, that's right. Thanks, Liz. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go into my sandbox course on Canvas here where I can mess around and no students can see it or have access to it. Um, all of us have access to these sandboxes, um, as I referenced in another video. So um, for this, we're going to talk about showing students your Yuja videos. So as you probably are aware, UCR has been encouraging us to use Yuja either to record our lecture videos or record and then store them since we have unlimited storage space, virtually unlimited storage space in there. So for those of you that have been using Yuja um, to kind of host your videos, how do you get them to actually be seen by your students? Because once they're in there, they're not actually accessible or displayed to students in any sort of way. You need to link them into your Canvas page, um, preferably by putting it into a module. So the way that you do that is once you're in your Canvas page and you have a module like we've talked about previously, you're probably going to want to go over and click on Yuja, but you don't actually have to do that and access the video in that way. Instead, you can just go right to your module plus button where you add things to your module of all types and you get the familiar menu where you can choose to add, you know, assignment, quiz, file, etc. But what you're going to want to do for Yuja is go all the way down to the last one to external tool and then you're going to get a list of all of these different tools that we have access to in you know coordination with canvas that are built to work with canvas but if you scroll all the way to the bottom of it um since they're in alphabetical order order you'll see Yuja media right at the bottom so from there just click on Yuja media and it will open your personal Yuja media library and you have to wait a little bit because it's a little bit slow sometimes um for it to load and show all of your videos um, that you have uh, it will show the most recent ones if you don't search but there is a you know search filter function that you can use to find a particular video you're looking for so let's just say i want to post this very first video i have access to right here so i will click it and then go ahead and click at the bottom insert content and then what it will do is it will link uh, directly to that video but it won't show the students this link. It will show, you know, whatever I decide to name it, like lecture one or something like that, or the topic for that particular day. And then you just hit add item. And then your usual link is now uh, embedded in the module, but don't forget to publish it so that students can see it from their end once you've added it into the module. So now when students come here and they're looking for the lecture from that day or for that day's content, they just click on that link to lecture one and your video will be available right here for playing. And so that that is it. Okay. Liz, do you have any questions for I me have, about Yuja videos? I do. Okay, so I have two questions. One is more of a Canvas thing. So when you publish stuff so that your students can see it, I've had the experience where students still say it's behind some kind of wall where even though I think it's published, it looks published, they are not able to access it. Maybe we'll cover that in a different video, like making sure that you have it actually open and available because sometimes I think it can be deceptive whether you do or don't. And then my other question is kind of obnoxious, but in my remote teaching experience, I have yet to use Yuja, so I haven't used it for any of my videos. Why would I use Yuja over something like putting everything into my R drive where I have unlimited video storage and then linking to the video so students have to authenticate with their UCR R drive credentials to be able to access it like that from within the Canvas environment. Why would I do Yuja? Mm -hmm. Right, that's a good question because they do, they work almost in identical ways where it's just linking to a video that's hosted somewhere else, but Yuja can be within, you know, just within Canvas. You don't ever have to leave to link it and go to that Google Drive. But the thing that's important for me with using Yuja, because I, I made the switch fairly early on, I think, is that um, once you play your videos, Yuja actually okay. auto captions those videos for you. Don't need to listen to overlapping me. Um, but it will auto caption the video for you in a way that a video stored in Google Drive, even if it's pulled directly from Zoom with its own auto captions, those don't transfer over into the drive. So students accessing a drive link 
video will not have auto captions, but Yuja does right down here in the lower right corner. So you can turn on um, closed captioning for your students. And some students do ask for that and some you know, require it for their accommodations. So that's why I've made the switch. But uh, Yuja also has cool functions like uh, embedding video quizzes in them to make sure that students are watching and paying attention, um, which I haven't personally used, but some colleagues have to great success. So a couple of reasons why you might consider that. Okay, I will consider it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Um, and then I'll just quickly answer your other question about publishing. So um, with Canvas, right, you always want to make sure that you're publishing at the right levels um, of content. So I told you, you know, in this demonstration, make sure that you're publishing the video link itself. But you also have to make sure that the parent level of the module is also published, because if this is checked and you have the little slash through it, then nothing under it, even if it's published, will be available to students to see. So if you're ever getting those weird, you know, requests of I can't see something, but you thought you published it, maybe there's a higher level uh, on something unpublished, making it hard for them to see. So gotcha. that's it. Okay, thank you. We will be back soon with more stuff. See you all soon.